roots of complex numbers. So this is a continuation of our previous discussion where we found ways of calculating roots of complex number. Now let's first summarize, have a look at the summary of the method. So given a complex number and the question is find nth roots of a given complex number. In other words, we need to solve equation uh, u raised to power n is equal to z0. We, we need to find all values of u such that when we take power of u to be n, then it gives me the answer z0. Now, in the first step, we write down this complex number in the exponential form. And in the next step, we write down the most general form of this complex number in the exponential form. So, in other words, uh, we just add 2k pi in the argument of this complex number as uh, we have discussed in our previous discussion that if I increase the argument of a complex number by an integer multiple of 2 pi, then it's going to give me the same complex number. And the third step, uh, we take uh, raise the power of this exponential form by 1 by n and from our previous discussion, this gives me the following answer. So there are three steps for calculating uh, nth roots of a given complex number. Now, uh, what is the variation of k? We discussed that the variation of k is going to be from 0 to n minus 1. So they are going to be exactly n nth roots of a given complex number z0. Now, next we are going to study a very uh, important example. Uh, it's basically the nth roots of unity. Now, our given complex number is 1. Now, if you remember that uh, in schools, when we used to calculate cube roots of 1 and fifth roots of 1, etc., etc., then the answer was always 1. So, in other words, if I calculate cube roots of uh, 1, then the answer was 1. Now, we learned that uh, since 1 is a complex number and uh, there should be 3 uh, cube roots of unity, etc., so now we are going to calculate those other roots of unity. And following the steps of our previous discussion, in the first step, we write down unity in terms of exponential form. And in the second step, we write down the most general form of this complex number. In other words, adding an integer multiple of 2 pi in the argument of this complex number. And in the third step, uh, we uh, raise uh, the power of this complex number by 1 by n. So, uh, symbolically it means that uh, we just uh, uh, divide uh, 0 by n and 2k pi by n. And of course, the variation of k is going to be from 0 to n minus 1. So, these are all nth roots of unity. Now, observe that if, if I take k is equal to 1, then it's going to give me this root. And uh, if I take k is equal to 2, then there is a relation between that root with omega n. So, if I take power of omega n to be 2, then it's going to give me e raised to power iota 2 pi by n multiplied by 2, which is exactly the same root that we got when k is equal to 2. So, in other words, we can say that if I start from omega n, then the next root is going to be omega n raised to power 2. And the next root is going to be omega n raised to power 3 and up to so on. And if I want to get all the roots of unity, then I need to take powers of this omega n by n minus 1. And of course, uh, when k is equal to 0, then we are always going to get 1. So this is the nth root of unity that we used to use in our schools. But then these are the other roots that we uh, found using this method. So in short, if I have this omega n, then the roots of unity are given by 1 omega n, omega n square, up to so on, omega n raised to power n minus 1. Now this omega n, due to which we are able to calculate uh, all of the roots of unity is called the primitive nth root of unity. Now, let's in particular calculate square roots of unity. Now, following the steps, 
the number is z is equal to 1. We can write down 1 in its exponential form. So we get e raised to power iota into 0. And in the step 2, so in step 2, we write down the most general form of this z0. So it becomes e raised to power iota 0 plus 2k pi, where this k is an integer. And in step 3, we calculate z raised to power 1 by 2. So in other words, it gives me the following answer. Iota 2 k pi by 2, where k is integer. Now simplifying and observing that the variation of k is 0 and 1, we get the following answers. I, so 2 will be cancelled out with 2 and we get k pi. And the variation of k is 0 and 1. Now when k is equal to 0, uh, then we get 1. And when k is equal to 1, we get, so the first root is going to be, for k is equal to 0, the answer is 1. And when k is equal to 1, the root is going to be minus 1. So in other words, uh, this is 1 and this is minus 1. And uh, uh, this also fits with our uh, discussion in the previous part of this uh, series of roots of complex numbers. So what was the description? So if I am calculating the square roots of a given complex number, then they are at the opposite ends of a line segment. And in this case, we can observe that they are at the opposite ends of this line segment. Similarly, we can calculate the cube roots of unity. So in this case, of course, the complex number is the same. Z0 is equal to 1. And we can write down this complex number. Following the steps, we can write down its uh, uh, exponential form and then writing down uh, this complex number in the most general form and then uh, raising the power to 1 by 3. We'll be able to get uh, the following uh, cube roots of unity. So the first root is always going to be uh, 1 and uh, fun, when k is equal to 1 uh, we are going to get the following uh, root minus 1 by 2 plus out of square root 3 by 2 and the third root of uh, 1 is going to be minus 1 by 2 minus iota square root 3 by 2. So these are three roots, uh, three cube roots of unity. Now let's discuss the geometry of these three roots. So this is 1 and this which is uh, another cube root of unity. So this is minus 1 by 2 plus iota square root 3 by 2. And this is the third root of, uh, third cube root of unity, which is minus 1 by 2 minus outer square root 3 by 2. And we can also observe that uh, all of them lie on a circle of radius uh, 1 and they are also uh, vertices of a regular triangle and up to so on. Now, uh, let's discuss in general the geometry of these nth roots of unity. So when n is equal to 1, we get 1 root. And when n is equal to 2, we get 2 roots. They are at the opposite ends of this line segment. When n is equal to 3, we get 3 roots, uh, which are the vertices of a regular triangle. And when n is equal to 4, that they are vertices of a square. And of course, they lie on a unit circle. And when we increase n, we'll be getting more and more roots but uh, two properties are very uh, fixed for these roots so the first property is all of them lie on a unit circle okay, so all of them lie on a circle of radius one and the second property is they are vertices of a polygon and of course uh, one of the important observation is uh, one of the root is always going to be one so this is basically our uh, we can say the starting point Now, our next discussion is the relation between roots of any complex number and the roots of unity. Now, we know that from our previous discussion that uh, the nth roots of any given complex number z0 can be calculated using this formula. Okay? Now, 
we can expand this formula in the following form so this is the first part and this is the second part now this second part is basically the roots of unity when we vary k then we'll be getting the nth roots of unity so in other words we can say that whenever we have nth roots of a given complex number then we can write them down in the following way okay so uh, this expression multiplied with the roots nth roots of unity now this in particular is just one nth root of this complex number z naught let's call it c naught okay so but the rest of the nth roots of this complex numbers can be obtained by multiplying roots of nth roots of unity with this c naught so if we know nth roots of unity and just one nth root of a complex number z naught then we can calculate all of the nth roots of a complex number so in general if zeta is one of the nth roots of z naught then the other nth roots of this z naught can be calculated by multiplying zeta with nth roots of unity now uh, let's calculate let's apply this observation to calculate cube roots of 2 iota if we want to calculate the cube roots of 2 iota we need to write it down in the exponential form first so the exponential form becomes 2 cosine pi by 2 plus iota sine pi by 2 in the second step we write down this z naught in the most general form so that is it becomes 2 e raised to power iota pi by 2 okay, so z naught equals 2 e raised to power iota pi by 2 plus 2 k pi and this k is integer and in the third step we just take the power to be 1 by 3 so in other words this becomes cube root of 2 and we multiply the power of e with 1 by 3 so we get the following expression here k is an integer so in other words we can say that these cube roots of 2 iota becomes cube root of 2 multiplied with e raised to power iota pi by 6 2 k pi by 3 where k varies from 0 1 and 2 yes so there should be 2 now the first root is cube root of 2 multiplied with iota pi by 6 and we don't need to calculate the rest of the roots of 2 iota because we can just multiply c naught with cube roots of 1 and we'll be able to get the rest of the roots of 2 i so in other words c1 will be equal to c naught into omega 3 c2 will be equal to c naught omega 3 square now since uh, we can calculate the square root cube roots and in general nth roots of any given complex number now uh, let's have a look at the quadratic formula again now remember when in schools where there was a symbol like square root of minus one then we just left it that it is not defined now we can calculate square root of any complex number which includes minus one which includes iota and other complex numbers so that's that is why we are going to revisit this quadratic formula again and let's see uh, what are the facilities available to us now using which we can calculate or we can apply quadratic formula on any quadratic equation now given this quadratic equation so in this quadratic equation or a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 plus iota and c is equal to 3 by 4 so quadratic formula is the same but now the point is b square minus 4ac is going to be a complex number now uh, we know that there is a square root in the formula on b square minus 4ac and we know that we can calculate uh, the square roots of any complex number now let's apply that method of calculating square roots of any complex number okay so in this case uh, this is the discriminant 
uh, if we simplify this thing then the discriminant becomes okay so this part is basically uh, the discriminant and in this case the discriminant is 4 iota and we want to calculate the square roots of 4 iota so using our previous discussion we can easily calculate the square roots of 4 iota to be square root 2 plus iota square root 2 minus square root 2 minus iota square root 2 now using these two values of square root of 4 iota we can easily calculate the roots or uh, roots of this quadratic equation or we can say that the solution of this equation okay so the roots uh, we are just replacing uh, the square roots of 4 iota in place of b square minus 4ac square root so this is the first root and this is the second root so this is the first solution and this is the second solution of this equation now in this discussion uh, we applied the techniques of nth roots of complex number to explore about roots of unity and then we further explored the relation between roots of unity and roots of any complex number and we also observed that uh, 